Okay, uh, problem 2.38, part A, uh, show that the wave function for a particle in the infinite square well returns to its original form after a period of time t called the quantum revival time, given to us as 4ma squared over pi h bar, that is, show that psi of x comma big T is equal to psi of x comma zero for any state. Uh, so let's start off by recognizing that for our infinite square well, the stationary states are defined as psi n being equal to the square root of 2 over a times sine of n pi over a times x. And then we can further recognize that uh, the energy levels uh, are equivalent to n squared pi squared h bar squared over 2 ma squared, which means that the time dependent wave stationary state phi n is going to equal uh, e to the negative i over h bar times e n t, uh, which is going to equal e to the negative i over h bar multiplied by t times n squared pi squared h bar squared over 2 m a squared. Uh, the h bar here cancels with the h bar squared at the top. This is going to give us e to the negative i n squared pi squared h bar over 2 m a squared times time. And at this point, we then use completeness theorem, which says that we can write any general solution, psi x comma t, as equivalent to an infinite summation from n equals one to infinity of c sub n times psi sub n times phi sub n, which is going to equal that same summation, that same c sub n term, and then the square root of two over a multiplied by sine times n pi over a times x multiplied by e to the negative i n squared pi squared h bar over 2 m a squared times little t. Uh, now we want to verify that psi of x comma zero equals psi of x comma big t. So let's do that. Psi of x comma zero, the exponential just goes to one. So what we have is we want to show that the summation from n equals one to infinity of cn times the square root of two over a times sine of n pi over a times x is going to equal summation from n equals one to infinity of cn times square root of two over a times sine of n pi x over a multiplied by e to the negative i n squared pi squared h bar over two m a squared multiplied by big T uh, where big T, as we defined here, is 4ma squared over pi h bar. So multiplied by 4ma squared over pi h bar. Uh, then we cancel that a little bit. So 2ma squared is going to cancel with 4ma squared. It's going to get a 2 at the top. Uh, we can cancel the pi h bar, get rid of the h bar, get rid of the squared. Uh, so this is going to equal from n equals one to infinity of c n times the square root of two over a times the sine of n pi over a times x times e to the negative i. And let's see, this is going to be uh, two pi n squared in that case. So uh, what we're ultimately trying to show is that we want this to equal one. So in order for this revival time to be accurate, we require that e to the negative i times two pi n squared must equal one. And very obviously this complex exponential can be reduced to cosines and sines via Euler's identity. So we can say cosine of two pi n squared minus i times sine of two pi n squared, whether or not this equals one. Uh, and very obviously this does, because remember n is indexed one, two, three, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, in this case, this is going to always be just a multiple of two pi. So sine of any multiple of two pi automatically equals zero. Cosine of any multiple of two pi automatically equals one. So we have one equals one. This does indeed check out. Therefore, verifying that this t that's given here is indeed the quantum revival time. Okay, uh, in part B, we are asked to find the classical revival time for a particle of energy E bouncing back and forth between an infinite square well. So in this case, uh, what we would have instead is a particle uh, stuck in a box going from x equals zero to x equals a. 
and we have this particle that's you know moving back and forth basically uh, pretty much bouncing back and forth in a straight line so uh, we want to find the revival time which is the amount of time it takes for this particle to get back to its original position and velocity. So this particle is initially uh, stuck right in the middle and is moving forward with a velocity v. So we want to find the amount of time it takes for the particle to go to the end, bounce back the other end, and then bounce back again to its original position. So uh, immediately, first off, we know that this distance that it has to travel is going to be 2a. So uh, d is equal to 2a. And then we know, uh, just using the fact that you know velocity equals distance over time, right? Uh, and time here is the revival time, uh, then we can say that, you know, 2a is equal to vt. So at this point, then the revival time is going to equal 2a over v. Uh, next, we can invoke sort of classical mechanics and all of the things we know about classical mechanics, which in this case is going to be energy. Uh, based sort of mechanics. We know that if this is just a particle in a vacuum and it's not being affected by gravity or electricity or anything like that, uh, the only form of energy it can have is kinetic. So we can say that it has some kinetic energy. E is equal to one half m v squared, which implies that we can solve for v and we can say that v is equal to plus minus square root two e over m, where all I've done is have isolated v. Uh, and then I can relate the classical revival time, big T here, because I can say, okay, well, V is equal to 2A over T, which means that 2A over T is equal to plus minus square root of 2E over M. Uh, and then at this point, it's just a matter of moving everything over. Uh, so in this case, uh, T over 2A is going to equal, and I'm going to get rid of the plus minus so because it, it no longer makes sense to have a negative revival time. Uh, square root of m over 2e. Move the 2a over, t is going to equal a times the square root of, uh, let's see, 2m over e. And that is our answer for part b. Part c, uh, very trivial. Uh, for what energy are the two revival times equal? So at this point, it's just a matter of setting this equal to the rev revival time in part a, in which case we have 4m a squared over pi h bar is going to equal a times the square root of 2m over e. So we just solve for v in this case, uh, get rid of the a right here. Uh, we have, let's see, 4m over, 4ma over pi h bar is equal to square root of 2m over e, which means that 2m over e is going to equal 16m squared a squared over pi squared h bar squared move everything up by one, and we get e over 2m is going to equal pi squared h bar squared over 16m squared a squared, multiplied by 2m at the top. So 2m multiplied, multiplied by 2m, and then these two cancel, obviously the m cancels with the m squared, the two cancels with the 16 to make an eight, so e is going to equal pi squared h bar squared over 8m a squared. And with that, we are done with this problem.